the Wind Pay Fantasy Novels series. Coiling Dragon also known as Pan Long, by I.E. Tomatoes. Please support the author by buying the original book on the link below. Book 17 Indigo Prefecture, Chapter 9, 80 Years As they discussed this, Baruch actually laughed. But the strange thing is, my bloodline is actually extremely pure. When undergoing the ancestral baptism, I actually badly startled those warriors on guard there, and was received by the elder. Your bloodline is very pure? Linley looked at Baruch. Baruch was just 6,000 years old, while the four Divine Beasts clan had been in existence for countless years. It was indeed quite bizarre for Baruch's bloodline to be so pure. Generally speaking, the children of our ancestor, in particular the second and third generation members of our Azure Dragon clan, will have an extremely pure lineage. But unexpectedly, my bloodlines are actually comparable with the second generation. Baruch didn't hide anything at all. The second generation of the Azure Dragon clan was composed of the sons and daughters of the Azure Dragon Sovereign. The children of the Azure Dragon Sovereign naturally had very pure bloodlines. The members of the third generation who had great innate talent could also be compared to the second generation. But as for the later generations, perhaps occasionally, in one generation, a genius would appear with extremely pure as your dragon lineage. But this was a vanishingly rare occurrence. Baruch, however, was one such example. This is also precisely the case as to why that elder told me these things regarding our clan, Baruch said. So that was how it was. Linley now understood. Up till now. He had been puzzled at how Baruch knew these things. Actually, the affairs of our ancestor as well those eight clans isn't much of a secret. In the clan, everyone with pure bloodlines, high potential, or are at the higher level will all know about these things, Baruch said solemnly. After all, clan warfare occurs frequently. Linley nodded. I could sense that when I saw those patrolling guards. The strictness and severity of the vigilance of the four Divine Beasts clan was far greater than that of the patrols on Miliwo Island. Linley, your natural talent is definitely better than even mine. Baruch's eyes were shining. You haven't even undergone the ancestral baptism, but you are already so powerful. After you undergo it, you'll then gain insights into the elemental laws of water. Insights into the elemental laws of water? Linley said in astonishment. He currently had only gained insights into the earth, the wind, and fire. He didn't have any insights whatsoever into the other elemental laws. Baruch said solemnly, right. Our Azure Dragon Clan is the clan of a water-type divine beast. If the members of our clan aren't even able to understand the elemental laws of water, then we would be jokes. Currently, you aren't able to gain insights into it, but that's only because your lineage hasn't been fully awakened. After you enter the Dragon Eyes Pool and undergo the ancestral baptism, you will naturally be transformed into an Azure Dragon, while at the same time, you will naturally and immediately reach the demigod level in the laws of water. In addition, you will also gain our innate divine ability. Linley was completely stunned. In the past, when Linley had watched how divine beasts would naturally become deities after reaching adulthood, he would secretly sigh at how naturally blessed they were. But he hadn't expected that the same was true for himself. I can become an Azure Dragon, and not only gain an innate divine ability, I'll also become a deity in water. Linley couldn't help but feel joy in his heart. Most likely, in the Infernal Realm, there are very few people who have five divine clones, including my original body. 
once he underwent the ancestral baptism, he would have the earth clone, fire clone, water clone, wind clone, and original body. 5 Bodies Since birth, he had high elemental affinity for earth and wind, and he was also able to somewhat use fire. But now, he would also have water. We are the Azure Dragon Clan, Baruch said proudly. Training in the elemental laws of water will be extremely fast. Look at me. Although my understanding and ability to gain insights is poor, in just a few thousand years, I've already gained insights into five of the profound mysteries of the elemental laws of water. I'm not too far away from the higher level. Linley couldn't help but be astonished. For a person to gain insights and master five of the profound mysteries of the elemental laws of water in just a few thousand years was indeed very fast. The heavens have indeed been quite kind to the Azure Dragon Clan, Linley said to himself. Clan leader, I haven't undergone the ancestral baptism yet. Then, how can I go undergo it? Linley hurriedly asked. The ancestral baptism would allow himself to increase in power. Naturally, the sooner he experienced it, the better. Don't be impatient. Baruch laughed. The ancestral baptism is carried out within the clan only once every century. Although the clan is very large, every hundred years, there will still be some newborn descendants. Thus, they'll be allowed to undergo the ancestral baptism. Oh! Linley hurriedly asked, then when will the next ancestral baptism be? The last one was twenty years ago. Thus, if you want to go undergo the ancestral baptism, you will need to wait eighty years, Baruch said. Eighty years! Linley wasn't in a rush. Ever since he had stayed five hundred years in the Amethyst Mountains, Linley no longer cared too much about the passage of time. A single session of meditation. After closing his eyes, eighty years might pass before he would open them again. Linley, in the future, you will be very powerful. Thus, your responsibilities will also be great. Our four Divine Beasts clan is currently battling against those eight great clans. You will definitely become a powerful warlord for our clan. Thus, you need to work hard. Only in this way will you be able to survive in the dangerous battles of the future," Baruch said solemnly. And Linley nodded seriously as well. In the eight great clans, seven were from other planes. They had moved their entire clans over, pursuing and attacking the four Divine Beasts clan. One could imagine how deep their hatred was for the four Divine Beasts clan. However, Given the arrogance of the four Divine Beasts clan, there was no way they could forever hide within the Skyrite Mountains. The struggles and battles between them thus naturally happened all the time. The warfare between the four Divine Beasts clan and the eight great clans. As soon as Linley got involved, he would begin to experience a true rain of blood and storm of slaughter. I need to train hard, Linley said to himself. Indigo Prefecture, Skyrite Mountains. It was as calm and peaceful as ever. Perhaps the army of the four Divine Beasts clan would be sent out to battle and war against the eight great clans, but Linley's group who lived deep within the Skyrite Mountains knew nothing of these things. The peaceful days spent in training passed very quickly. Sixty years soon passed. On this day, in the Skyrite Mountains. The gorge where Linley's group was currently living. The many members of the Azure Dragon Clan living here were either training or gathering together. Let's go to the Yulan branch and tease those little fellows. Want to come? In one corner of the gorge, six youths were gathered together, and one of them, a blue-haired man, laughed as he spoke. I'm not going. I'm not going either. The other five men all shook their heads, and one of them even said, Second brother, don't go cause trouble at the Yulan branch. 
What's wrong with you? How come all of you are so cowardly now? It's just the Yulin branch. Their strongest members are just gods. What are you afraid of? The blue-haired man was rather unhappy. Second brother, in the past, it was fine to cause problems for the Yulin branch, but what you don't realize is that in the centuries you've been in seclusion, there have been changes in the Yulin branch. What sort of changes? The blue-haired man snickered. Can it be that in just a few centuries, they've produced a high height? A few centuries ago, their entire branch only had twelve gods. Aside from that Baruch who trains a bit faster, the others are all very slow. Can it be that Baruch has become a high height? It's not Baruch. Sixty years ago, another member of our clan returned and said that he was of the Yulan branch. The tribesmen all took him to be a god, but he was able to just stand there without moving and send us through flying. The blue-haired youth couldn't help but be stunned. Did you say a sru? Not just a sru. When we heard this from a sru, we didn't believe it. So, we went with elder brother to make some trouble for him, but dot even elder brother was easily defeated by that Linley. Elder brother? The blue-haired man was now truly stunned. My elder brother was defeated as well? Right. Thus, elder brother is now meditating in seclusion. Another one of the five spoke out. Only now did the blue-haired man realize that this was the reason he hadn't seen his elder brother this time upon concluding his training. He had thought that his elder brother had gone traveling. So in reality, he was in seclusion. This person truly is powerful? The blue-haired man asked, puzzled. What is his name? From what the Yulin branch's people say, he is named Linley. Someone immediately said. Right. His name is Linley. Those Yulin branch members are now very smug. They even say dot that if we want to struggle against the Yulin branch, then we should come and see if we can beat Linley. Unfortunately, all of the high heads in our gorge who tested him were defeated. Thus, in the past sixty years, nobody has dared to cause trouble for the Yulin branch again. After hearing the explanation from his friends, the blue-haired man finally understood. This gorge was a place where very weak branches lived. Many branches had just a few high heads, and the entire gorge, all combined, only had twenty or thirty high heads. But Linley was able to defeat several of them. Naturally, the other branches in the gorge would acknowledge the new status of the Yulin branch and not go humiliate them. After all, if instead of humiliating them, they were themselves humiliated, that would truly be a loss of face. Suddenly, a surge of endless ripples descended from the heavens. That unique energy ripple caused the blue-haired man and the other five to be startled. The descent of the natural laws? The six men were greatly shocked. This was the sign of a person becoming a deity on their own. The six immediately began to chat amongst themselves. Who made a breakthrough? The descent of the natural laws was centered on the Yulin branch. It was someone from their branch. It's probably that saint, finally breaking through to become a demigod. No need for all this commotion. The blue-haired man snickered. Dot. 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 Currently, quite a few people were gathered outside Linley's door, with only Delia and Bibi having run inside. What's going on? Baruch walked over and immediately asked. Taros laughed. Linley made a breakthrough. He's become a high height? Baruch immediately asked through divine sense. Up till now, many of the other people in the Yulin branch viewed Linley as a high head, just one who was low-key and hid his aura. Not sure. Taros shook his head. He shouldn't have. When Linley first arrived, 
he was still meditating on the fifth profound mystery of the laws of the earth. While they chatted amongst themselves, three figures emerged from within the room. He came out. Linley came out. The Yulin Branch's clansmen were all very excited. Everyone, you can go back to your own places now. I just made a breakthrough in one of my divine clones, that's all. Linley laughed calmly. Seeing the group of clansmen present, especially the look of veneration with which they viewed him, Linley still felt quite happy. After having arrived here, Linley naturally wouldn't just watch as his clansmen were humiliated. Thus, on multiple occasions, he had shown his might, shocking the other branches. These days, the Yulin branch no longer needed to endure humiliation. These other clansmen naturally felt gratitude towards Linley. Everyone can disperse now. Don't stay here. Baruch laughed as well. Only now did the group of clansmen, chatting and laughing amongst themselves, depart. While doing so, they said amongst themselves, Linley is so formidable. What clone do you think made the breakthrough? Most likely, a divine destruction clone. It might be his divine wind clone. Those other clansmen weren't clear about Linley's detailed situation. They weren't even sure as to what type of laws Linley was currently training in. Linley, what breakthrough did you make? Caesar went up to him, greeting and asking him. Divine fire clone. Linley laughed at himself. Only now have I finally reached the god level in my divine fire clone. I truly am slow in training in fire. Caesar, Taros, and the others were immediately speechless. He had been training for less than a thousand years, but had reached the god level in earth, wind, and fire. And he was complaining that he was slow. How is your training in the laws of the earth progressing? Taros asked. Still training in the fifth profound mystery. I've reached a bottleneck. I wonder if I'll be able to completely master the profound mysteries of strength before the ancestral baptism. Linley said. Only a decade or two was left before the next ancestral baptism. Ten or so years, today it is, was a very short period of time. Linley's original body accompanied Delia, while his three divine clones were completely absorbed in their training. But even after the day of the ancestral baptism was about to arrive, the profound mysteries of strength remained stuck at the bottleneck. On this day, nearly eighty years had passed since Linley had arrived at the Skyrite Mountains. In front of Linley's residence, Baruch was walking over. Linley, tonight, the ancestral baptism is about to begin. I've already registered your name for it. Soon, you'll most likely be led away by others to participate in the ancestral baptism. Make your preparations. Understood. Linley's eyes couldn't help but be filled with a look of anticipation. The ancestral baptism. What exactly was it like? Book 17. Indigo Prefecture, Chapter 10, Dragon Eyes Pool. The skies were dark. It was already sundown. Tonight, the ancestral baptism was going to begin. Within the gorge in the Skyrite Mountains, Linley was patiently waiting. Just a short while later, Linley saw a warrior dressed in as Urama fly over from the air. Who is Linley? The Azuramid warrior shouted. Linley felt a surge of joy. He immediately went up to greet the man. 
I am Linley. Linley laughed. The Azuramat warrior glanced at Linley. After a short, careful scrutinization, he couldn't help but frown and bark, stop joking around. Everyone who goes to the ancestral baptism is less than a century old. You are a god. Can it be that you are less than a century old? Quick, go have Linley come out. Linley didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. It seemed as though he had been taken for an imposter. I am Linley. I had been living in other planes, and only returned to the Skyrite Mountains just 80 years ago. Linley explained. Thus, up till now, I have yet to participate in the ancestral baptism. Oh? The Azuramat warrior was rather puzzled. At this moment, watching from below, Parach, Delia, Bibi, and the others also didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. The Azuramat warrior actually didn't believe Linley was who he said he was. Parach himself immediately flew up towards that Azuramat warrior. It's true. He is indeed Linley. He wasn't born in our Skyrite Mountains, which is why to this very day, he has yet to undergo the ancestral baptism. The Azuramat warrior glanced at Linley, then let out a cold snort. I'll believe you for now. But, kid, you better understand. Dot if you've already undergone an ancestral baptism, undergoing a second baptism will be of no use to you. And, if you were to be found out to be an imposter, you will be in trouble. Enough. Let's go. The Azuramad warrior immediately flew high into the sky. Linley turned his head to say his farewells to Delia and Bibi, then immediately followed. They flew up into the Dragon Avenue, and followed it. Linley kept close behind the Azuramad warrior as they advanced non-stop. After flying for quite some time by the side of this Azuramad warrior, the two arrived at the top of a pitch black mountain peak. At the top of the mountain peak, there were multiple Azuramad guards, a bald, black-robed man, as well as ten or so young men and women. My lord, Linley has been brought here. The Azuramad warrior flew over and immediately said, Respectfully. The bald, black-robed man glanced sideways at Linley, nodded, then instructed the warrior, Enough. You can leave now. The black-robed man looked at Linley. Linley, wait here for a while. When everyone is present, we'll go in. Yes. Linley stood there with the other ten or so people. These people are all just saints. Linley could immediately tell that these youngsters were very suspicious, and they looked at Linley in surprise. They were amazed to discover that they actually couldn't see Linley's power. This person isn't a saint? Those young men and women were all puzzled. For someone who had been born less than a century ago, especially a descendant of the Azure Dragon Clan, it wasn't very likely that they would be able to become a deity on their own without having undergone the ancestral baptism. Linley just waited there quietly, as one young man after another was led here by Azure Armored Warriors. A total of 28. All present. The bald, black-robed man nodded slightly, then said calmly, Enough. Little fellows, all follow me. Remember, without my permission, you aren't allowed to run around wildly. As he spoke, the bald, black-robed man led them all into a corridor within the mountain peak. The outsides of the entrance to the corridor were all covered with draconic sculptures. The entire corridor led downwards, deep into the heart of the mountain. This corridor was nearly six meters wide and four meters tall. It was very rectangular, while at the same time the walls of the corridor had some ancient sculptures as well. The floor was covered with a woven carpet. Linley just quietly followed the bald, black-robed man. Hey, you, you're already a deity? A jade-haired girl walking alongside Linley couldn't resist her curiosity, and so she asked the question in a soft voice. Linley turned to glance at her. 
He chuckled, but only nodded in response. The jade-haired girl's eyes immediately lit up, and were filled with a look of adoration. You are so amazing. You've never undergone the ancestral baptism, but you were able to become a deity in under a century. Even the other youths who were taking part in the ancestral baptism turned to look at Lily with either veneration, or surprise, or jealousy. Less than a century? He had passed the century mark long ago. However dot in the Yulan continent, when he had become a deity on his own, it was true that at that time, he had been training for less than a century. Pipe down. The bald, black-robed man shouted icily. Immediately, those twelve saints were so scared, they didn't dare say another word. Linley's expression didn't change. This bald fellow has quite the temper. Linley continued to walk and follow him. Moments later, they arrived at the end of the corridor, which had a wide hall past it with quite a few black-robed figures within. All here? One of the black-robed men went to welcome them. A total of twenty-eight. All present, the bald, black-robed man said. You watch them for a while. I'll go invite the two elders to activate the dragon eyes pool. Right. Do you know where the two elders are, right now? The black-robed man said. The bald, black-robed man said, puzzled, could it be that they haven't arrived yet? They arrived, they arrived. But the two elders just went into a private room. They even said that without their permission, nobody is permitted to enter. The black-robed man was puzzled. They are in the private room in the Eastern Palace Hall. I'll go take a look. The bald, black-robed man immediately walked over. Deep within the mountain, in a private room in the Eastern Palace Hall. Two figures were currently standing, shoulder to shoulder. One of them had a hawk hook nose, a balding head, two drooping sideburns, and a pair of eyes that were as grim and callous as a viper's. The other was very handsome, with long hair that flowed down his back. The two were both dressed in Azurama that was embroidered with gold patterns, as well as a cloak that was covered with strange, peculiar magic runes which flowed with all sorts of faint light. They were currently focusing their attention on watching a sky recording that currently being broadcast, floating in the air within the private room. Formidable. The bald man couldn't help but sigh in praise. Even you and I probably wouldn't be able to so easily block that blade blow. The handsome man sighed in praise as well. The sky recording currently being played, amazingly, was the scene of Linley's battle in the skies above Miliwo Island. The scene which had just caused the two to sigh in amazement was that of the redrobed elder of the Bagshaw clan using a single blade chop to break apart Linley's cube. That battle had been watched by many outsiders who were present at Miliwo Island. Those of them who trained in the elemental laws of water naturally would record it down. Because the main figure in this battle, Linley, was considered by many experts to be of the four divine beasts clan, these sky recordings naturally made their way to the four divine beasts clan. Only, the speed at which this happened was rather slow. Linley had been in the four divine beasts clan for so many years now, but the sky recording had just now made its way here. Look! That red-robed elder is about to fight with our clansmen, the handsome man said hurriedly. In the sky recording, that red-robed elder, after hearing the order from the clan leader of the Bagshaw clan, Baquil, began to wield his blade and charge towards Linley. Seeing the sabre blow strike down, the two elders both held their breaths. But then, they saw from the sky recording that Linley was able to use just his right leg to kick against that sever, smashing that seven star fiend directly into the ground. Moments later, the sky recording came to an end. Formidable. The handsome man sighed in praise. A stunned look was in the eyes of the bald man as well. Just by relying on his body, 
he was able to resist a full force material attack from a seven star fiend. For his body to be so incredibly strong. Even in our clan, there are few who are at this level. You and I are not, at least. The handsome man agreed. Although the Azure Dragon Clan's members were indeed strong in dragon form, to be as strong as this dot very few in the Azure Dragon Clan could accomplish it. For one's dragon form to be at this level of power wasn't just a matter of lineage, it also required other factors. It isn't just that his body is tough. Did you see that globe of earth and yellow light surrounding his body? Everyone trapped within it will have their movements be affected. Even that red-robed elder of Miluo Island was affected as well. The bald man said solemnly. Right. That's a gravitational space. An extremely formidable gravitational space. The handsome youth said, puzzled, someone in our clan is actually specialized in the laws of the earth? And at such a level? Inconceivable. After having seen that sky recording, they were certain that this person was of their clan. In the entire infernal realm, only the Azure Dragon Clan could have such powerful bodies after assuming dragon form. This person's power is great. The bald man sighed. He was able to defeat a seven star fiend. Without even using his innate divine ability. If he had used his innate divine ability, he would have easily won. Right. The handsome man nodded. His body is so powerful, which means that his lineage must be very pure. If his lineage is very pure, then his innate divine ability must be formidable as well. The handsome youth knew full well how powerful his clan's innate divine ability was. But, I've never seen this person before. The bald man looked at the other man. Have you? The handsome man frowned. This transformation dot I haven't seen it either. It might be an expert who is in seclusion outside the clan. The handsome man said. Hem. The clan is in a state of crisis, but this person still doesn't return. The bald man was clearly very unhappy. He might be powerful, but if he doesn't return, what good is he? Knock. Knock. The sound of the door being knocked. Enter. The bald man said calmly. The bald, black-robed man pushed open the door to the private room, then said respectfully, Elders, the twenty-eight participants of the ancestral baptism are here. Oh. Let's go. Let's activate the dragon eyes pool. The handsome man said, and then he headed out alongside the bald man. The two were members of the Elders of the Azure Dragon Clan. Linley's group of twenty-eight followed behind the two elders and the four black-robed men, walking through a narrow corridor. Up in front, the two elders chatted and laughed with each other. Garvey, Jiawai, it's quite a rare occasion for us to have a god participate in the ancestral baptism. It is quite interesting. The handsome man nodded. He became a god without undergoing the ancestral baptism. Not bad. The handsome man turned to glance at Linley, but unfortunately. During that great battle above Miliuo Island, Linley had been in dragon form the entire time. Currently, Linley was in human form, so the two elders naturally couldn't recognize him as being the main character of the sky recording they had just seen, that so called reclusive expert who was living outside the clan. At the end of the walkway was a very wide palace hall. In the center of the palace hall, there was a large round pool that was 200 meter in diameter. The waters of the pool emitted a very peculiar odor, and next to the pool, there was a black robed figure that was tossing in a large amount of herbs into it. Bubble, bubble. The waters of the pool continuously frothed. This is the dragon eyes pool. The bald man said in a clear voice. Wait a while. Go in only after I tell you to. As he spoke, the bald man, with a flip of his hand, retrieved a fist-sized gemstone. 
This fist-sized gemstone sparkled with a dazzling azure light, and the bald man tossed it directly into the dragon eyes pool. Plonk! The gemstone fell into the waters of the pool. The strange thing was. The dragon eyes pool immediately glowed with a dazzling azure light that was quite piercing to the eye. And then, the waters of the entire dragon eyes pool began to wildly bubble, with blasts of water constantly appearing and a large amount of azure energy forming waves that circulated on the surface, as though tiny azure dragons were swirling about. Enough! You can all go in now! The bald man said casually. You keep an eye on them for me. The bald man turned to look at the bald, black-robed man. After the ancestral baptism is complete, retrieve the dragon eyes jewel and give it to us. Yes, elder. The bald, black-robed man bowed as he replied. Let's go. The bald man and the handsome man laughed, then departed. The ancestral baptism would take a fairly long period of time. The two elders wouldn't just wait the like fools. The bald, black-robed man immediately stared coldly at the group of twenty-eight. All of you, go in. Dragon eyes pool? Linley stared at the azure energy swirling about in front of him, at that dragon eyes pool that was emitting that dazzling azure light. He immediately dove directly into the dragon eyes pool, moving so fast he was like a ray of light. As for the other twenty-seven, they too charged forward en masse and entered the Dragon Eyes Pool. The twenty-eight all landed within the Dragon Eyes Pool. Roar! The entire Dragon Eyes Pool emitted a strange, draconic roar, a roar which shook the soul. At the same time, the dazzling azure light which the Dragon Eyes Pool had been shooting out in every direction began to dim and the large amounts of azure energy swirling on the surface of the pool, with a whoosh, flooded towards those twenty-eight people. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for the new updates of your favorite audiobooks. Please support the author by buying the original books in the description. Love and Peace. Wind Pay.